Hi there and welcome to today's vlog. Well, uh, it's only uh, the 5th of March today and uh, I've been out this morning to cut our lawn for the first time. It is starting to grow. It's, I know it's a bit early uh, in many ways compared with previous years. You don't usually start cutting the lawn yet, but I have done it. And uh, part of the reason for that was that in a couple of weeks time, our new summer house will be delivered. And we're looking forward to that. And then we will wait with bated breath for the summer to arrive and be able to go and sit out there and enjoy um, just uh, chilling out in the back garden. So that'll be good. Today is quite a pleasant day, so I got took the opportunity to get out and cut the lawn. Uh, earlier in the week, our new fence panels arrived. We ordered 13 new fence panels. Uh, one of the issues you've got to sort out when you arrive in a new home is which fence is yours and which is your neighbour's. And uh, we think that's pretty sure that the fence that was a bit grotty, uh, fallen to bits, was ours. So we took the opportunity to go out and order some fence panels. We had the choice of uh, they could just deliver them and we would slot them in. They've got the concrete fence posts are there so the panels could just slot in. So we thought we could, uh, one option would be for us to try and do that ourselves. But uh, the problem is uh, Sue's not great at lifting heavy things and I've had a bit of trouble with my back. So it's okay now. I didn't want to uh, damage it again. And uh, certainly speaking, Steph and Matt, who could have come and helped us, were not, not allowed to at the moment. So we thought, although we had to pay a bit extra, uh, it'd be better to get the uh, experts who brought the panels to, to fit them. And we are jolly pleased that we did that because, um, <coughs> excuse me, some of the panels didn't fit exactly. Uh, apparently the old way of measuring six foot is not exactly the same as these days. I don't understand six foot is six foot to me. So the six foot apart, these concrete posts. So they had to do a bit of sawing and and uh, adjusting to get the, the panels to fit, but they did, did it eventually, did a great job. So we're just so pleased that we decided to pay that little bit extra, get them to do the job. It's always a good idea, in my opinion, to get somebody who knows what they're doing to do the job rather than trying to sort it out. You know, we could have still been trying to get those panels into the uh, into the slots if we uh, had decided to do it ourselves. And in a sense, that kind of fits in with what I'm going to talk about uh, today because uh, we're in, if you watched the last vlog, you may remember we're talking about uh, five pegs from the book of the prophet Habakkuk, who is one of the Old Testament prophets. His book is only three chapters long, well worth reading. It doesn't take very long. So uh, last time we were looking at the question, is it OK to, to question God or to bring our questions to God? And we saw from the book of Habakkuk, indeed, from the scriptures, from the Bible, that it is OK. God is OK with our questions. Um, it doesn't object to us bringing our questions to God. We don't understand them. We cry out to God, why or how long is the, there was a question that Habakkuk brought. How long, O oh Lord? So anyway, we move on today to our second peg, if you like. These are the pegs on which we can hang thoughts and reflections from the book of Habakkuk. The second peg is that God sees the big picture. You may remember that Habakkuk, uh, cried out to God because he looked around and he saw a society in chaos. There was there was violence. There was injustice. There was suffering. Uh, the, many of the evil people seemed to prosper, whereas uh, many of the righteous were suffering. And he, God uh, didn't seem to be doing anything about it. And Habakkuk cries out, "God, when are you going to do something? How long, O Lord, must we wait? How long did I bring my prayers and you don't answer?" And the ironic thing, really, as we read through this book, is that uh, Habakkuk, when God responds, Habakkuk's not happy with it. In fact, he begins by accusing God of not doing enough. Uh, he says, why do you tolerate wrongdoing, God? God, you're not doing enough. But when God reveals to him, that he's already working his purposes out, that he's actually raising up a group of people, a new empire, 
new superpower called the Babylonians, who were really violent and uh, oppressive people. But he's raising, God is raising them up to punish the wicked uh, people of, of, uh, of Habakkuk's uh, nation, uh, of Judah. And uh, God says to Habakkuk, watch and be utterly amazed. For I'm going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if you were told. I am raising up the Babylonians. Now, Habakkuk hears this word from God, and he, it, to him it just doesn't make any sense. Why would you ra punish the wicked people by raising up even more wicked people? Uh, so God reveals something of his plan to Habakkuk, but from Habakkuk saying, God, you're not doing enough, now he's thinking, God, you're doing too much, that doesn't make sense. Uh, and the reality is that that Habakkuk can't see the big picture. He hasn't discerned that God is already working his purposes out. And when we think of that, I'm reminded of uh, some words from the prophet Isaiah, where God says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ones, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And I can look back in, in my own life when things have happened, especially I think when uh, some things happen to someone I love or someone I'm close to, a close friend, perhaps a, a serious illness. Um, I can think of uh, my brother Phil who died uh, three and a half years ago of cancer. It didn't make sense. Why would God uh, allow that to happen? And, and I can think of other situations where I just have been at a total loss to understand why God such, should have allowed such a thing to happen. But the reality is that God can see the big picture. God is able to weave every circumstance into his purpose, even when we cannot gra begin to grasp what is going on. Why has God allowed this? Why this suffering? Why has God planned that? Or allow this. God can see the big picture when often we can't. Uh, and that uh, is the second peg to when we can't understand what's happening, when we can't, when we're going through tough times or someone we love is going through tough times, when we can't understand God, we've got to understand. God sees what we cannot see and, and that will lead us on to the next peg and we have a choice then and we've got to trust God who sees the big picture. So maybe you're going through a tough time right now, maybe you're experiencing great suffering or someone close to you, maybe you can't understand why is God allowing this but just remember that though we may not understand, God can see the big picture. God is working his purposes out. So God bless you. Thank you so much for watching today.